Hello and welcome back to the Introduction to Watercolor class. In this video demonstration, I'm going to be using the primary colors to create a simple still life. In this case, a red apple. For those of you who are beginning watercolor artists, the purpose of doing this exercise is to help you to understand and then to demonstrate the ability to mix colors. But many experienced artists limit themselves to just these three colors. We mentioned before that the primary colors create what's called a triad on the color wheel. Because of this equally distant arrangement on the color wheel, this trio of colors creates both color contrast and harmony in a painting. So many artists use a primary color scheme purposely. Let's get started. First, I'll tape down the edges of my watercolor paper to my painting board. Here's an image of the apple that I'm going to draw and paint today. It's an artificial apple. You can use an apple that you have at home, or if you don't have one, you can use this image for this painting. Next, I'll create my contour drawing. The apple is an organic shape. I notice it's a combination of areas of angles and somewhat straight lines and then areas of curved irregular lines. I lightly sketch in those outer edges first. Then I add a bit more pressure to my pencil and emphasize those correct edges. Next I lightly sketch in that dip where the stem of the apple is and add the stem. Then I indicate the edges of the cast shadow. I don't completely draw it in. I leave the outermost part of the cast shadow blank because I want to create a blend there and I don't want my pencil line to show up. Now let's mix the colors that we'll need for this painting. Now we call this a red apple but it's not just red it has several different colors that we're going to need to mix. We need to mix colors that are light to dark but also warm to cool. I notice many areas of the apple have a yellowish or yellow-orange color so I mix that first. I do that by mixing a puddle of yellow first and then just adding a dab of red at a time until I get it to the right yellow-orange color that I want. In some of the lighter red areas of the apple, it's not really pure red, it's more of a red-orange. In this puddle, again, I use a combination of red and yellow, but more red this time and less yellow. In some of the mid-tone and darker areas of the apple, I see a very vibrant red. So I mix a puddle of pure red that's going to go in these areas. Last, I mix my very darkest red tone or shadow color for my apple. For this, I use a mixture of red plus some yellow and blue together. But I make sure that I've got more red in the mixture than the other two primary colors. You might have to adjust this a little bit until you get the right combination. And remember, when I add yellow and blue to red, it's really the same as adding red's complement, which is green. Now I get a piece of test paper to see how these colors are going to look before I start painting. I've got a nice change in value from light to dark and warm to cool. Now let's paint. I start by taking my yellow-orange color or lightest color and dabbing it around the top of the apple. I notice three highlight areas that I want to avoid. I'm going to leave those the white of the paper. I carefully go around each highlight 
I see that up toward the top and around the sides of the apple. I'm painting that in while the previous color is still wet. That way those two colors bleed and blend together. As I work my way down, I notice that the apple gets much more red and darker, so I switch over to my pure red color. I add in a few dabs of it around the top edge of the apple and next to the stem of the apple. And then I begin to fill in the middle of the apple, down to the bottom. I notice a bit more yellow-orange down around the bottom of the apple. So I switch over to that yellow-orange as I complete it, down to the base of it. Now while all of that paint is still wet, I'm going to soften some of my edges of the highlights. If you look closely, highlights are sometimes softer and then hard-edged in other places. While the paint is still wet, I want to add in my darkest form shadows on the apple. So I take my darkest mixture, I add a little bit on that upper right edge because it's pretty dark there. And then I drag it down into the core of the shadow. Now this apple is not a perfect sphere. It has a sphere shape, but it's irregular. So my core of the shadow is irregular. It's a little darker in some areas than others. I also add a bit of that darkest color around the left edge of that indentation where the stem is. While I'm painting this in, I have to adjust my mixture a little bit and make it even darker. And I'm going to add some of those areas back into the core of the shadow. I also add more dark toward the bottom of where the stem will be and along that top right edge of the apple. While this paint is still wet, you can really take some time to add in colors where you think you need them. Now I notice some reflected light toward the bottom of the apple as well. For that, I use a lift out technique where I dry off my brush and soak up some of that value like a sponge. Now that I've adjusted all the values on the apple the way I want them, I'm going to dry it off with my heat gun. Before moving on to the cast shadow, I decide to finish the stem of the apple. So I add some blue to that mixture of yellow-orange that I have toward the top of my palette to make it a dull green. I paint in most of the stem of the apple with this color first. 
but I also notice a little light area on the very top that looks like a highlight. So I use a lift out technique to take out that highlight on the top of the stem. Now I use my heat gun to dry off the apple and the stem. Now to finish the stem, I want to put on the dark form shadows on the side of it. They're a very dark neutral. So using a combination of these three primary colors, I mix them together in the correct amount to get a dark neutral color. It doesn't have to be perfect. I make sure that the mixture has more pigment and less water. That way it'll be very dark. I dab that color into the darkest form shadows on that stem. And then also just a little bit around the base of the stem to really make it look like that area sinks down in or recedes. Now it's time to paint the cast shadow. I'm using two colors for the cast shadow. They're both neutral tones. One is darker, one is lighter. Both are a mixture of the primary colors. But both have more blue, slightly more blue in the mixture than the other colors. I want them to look like a cool gray. My top mixture is the darkest. For this, I use less water and more pigment. My bottom color on the palette is going to be my middle tone or lighter shadow color. This has more water in and even slightly more blue. I'll test those colors out on a piece of scrap paper to see how they look. That looks pretty good to me. I start with my lighter of the two colors, my lighter neutral color and I carefully paint along the bottom edge of the apple and along the bottom right side. And then I add more color away from the apple until I have the shape of the cast shadow painted in but I leave a little bit of blank paper out toward the right edge of the cast shadow that's furthest away from the apple. That's where I'm going to soften the edge. Now I clean off my brush, dab it on the sponge so it's not completely dry, and I soften the outer edge of the cast shadow. I do this a couple of times so that I have a nice, soft transition from dark to light. Now while that cast shadow is still wet, I take my darkest value, my darkest shadow color, and I dab it in, especially toward the very bottom of the apple and a little bit up the right side within that cast shadow area. This color will just bleed in to that cast shadow to create a gradation or transition from dark to light. It looks okay but I decide to dry off the apple a little bit with my heat gun. Then I mix more pigment in with that top neutral color to make it even darker. And I dab a little bit of it into the bottom of that apple in the cast shadow to make it even darker. Then I use my lighter shadow color to soften the edge to create a smooth transition or a blend.
now it's completed. You can see that by using only the primary colors, I was able to get convincing value and color on this object. Using only these three colors, you can paint anything. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you can join me again for the next one. Have a great day.